All right, everybody, welcome back to the shop. Let's start this day off with a little venting session. All right, after five days, after five days drying, I'm hoping we're going to see this, we have more lifting. Lifting there, lifting there. This is after five days. It's not as bad as it was before. I've even got some on the rudder too. Um, like I said, it's not as bad as it was, but it's still lifting after five days. So, I was on the phone with Krylon today. And the only thing I got out of them was maybe you should just go ahead and just try to throw dust coats on. Just light little dust coats. And I said, but that's not going to give the gloss that I'm looking for. They didn't know what to do with it. The only thing they were able to tell me is they put too much, there's, there's too much solvent uh, in the paint. And that's what's causing the lift. So I really don't understand what the problem is, but somewhere, somewhere there's, a, there's a problem because uh, the solvents are far too aggressive. And I think it's just so that it gets a, uh, it gets a good bond on the first coat. Um, so, and we're gonna find out if that's gonna lift, because that's just one coat that needs another coat. Is this stuff gonna lift off of here? I've gotta put the covering on it this morning. And very disheartening. I, I've used Krylon for, for decades and never had a problem. And now all of a sudden, I've got a problem and this is the plane you don't want the problem on so because if it comes time for me to why well, end up having to use some other paint I'm gonna have to repaint the whole thing and then we're just adding weight to it and I really don't want to do that so I'm gonna keep trying to work with this the best I can because the last thing I want to have to do is uh, tear all the covering off and start all over again ran into another issue with uh, with the Supermax paint again um, and I ended up running um, running running down to Sherwin-Williams paint because Sherwin-Williams owns Krylon. That's where I got the paint from. And ended up speaking to them and they got me in touch with uh, with one of their uh, uh, people over at their call center. Um, <clears throat> didn't get a chance to speak to a natural chemist because I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. They, it, it, I, I really didn't get the answers from them that I was hoping. Um, but I, I, with the info that they gave me, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to just deduce that the problem is that, because they said it's got a very aggressive solvent. It's the solvent itself in the paint. And what the solvent is doing, it's going through... The solvent is going through the paint that's already been down, even for the paint that's been down for five days. Um, because the paint itself is not done gassing. So the solvent was able to go down through the paint and loosen up the paint because what it's doing is it's actually going through the paint into the nitrate dope. And the, let me take you back in the shop again, or back in the painting area. Because what it's doing, it's going through and it's loosening up the fabric, although it's kind of hard to see. But the fabric itself is loose. It's not like right here. It's, it's, it hasn't tightened up yet. It's, it's kind of loose and sagging. So what it is, is it's going all the way through and loosening up the, loosening up the dope. So that's why the fabric, sorry about this, that's why the fabric is loosening up and becoming flexible, uh, so it loses its tightness. So what it's doing is, is it's drying. It's, so as it dries, the paint contracts, which of course everything else is contracting. So it tightens back up again. But that's where the problem is. So the best answer I can get out of them on how to do it was to put, to put very light coats on, almost misting coats. I don't know how well that's going to work out with giving it a gloss finish. You can't put lacquer over the top of this because lacquer is very aggressive as well. Uh, I'm assuming this isn't an enamel. There's nothing on the back of these cans that says what it is. Um, but I believe it's an enamel because if you go in, you go to Google, search uh, Supermax 
uh, enamel and it'll bring up things. So that's what we think it is. Uh, a good friend of mine was down here, took a look at it, and he's got a friend that uh, used to be a chemist for, uh, uh, for Valspar, so they're going to try to get hold of him to find out uh, what they'll know or what he might know about it. But that's kind of where I'm at. Is it how, how do I want to try to progress with the, with the painting? For the top and the, now the bottom of the fuselage because that was on the bottom of the fuselage so now I've got to go ahead and wet sand that down. These are the ailerons. These have already got the bottoms painted two coats so I don't need to put another one on. What I did was when I painted this and painted the wing, put one coat on and, and about two hours later I came back and sprayed another coat on so it did not lift which I don't understand <laughs> I don't understand why it will will do this but it would it, but if you do it again it, it makes it lift and and I couldn't get an, I couldn't get an uh, answer out of them as well um, the problem I'm gonna have is when I spray the top of this what's gonna happen to this area up front here I've got this on the on the uh, the wings too is it gonna lift this paint on the front and that's the last thing I want um, I don't know. It, it this this paint has has put me in a position where you don't you don't know you don't know how you want to progress through with it. I've got a I've I've got to repaint. I've got to put another coat on the the wing struts, and I'm going to find out what's going to happen with the wing struts. I'm currently covering the landing gear, so and I'm going to find out right away what's going to happen. Now this is on top of metal, bare metal. So it may do nothing wrong. It might just go ahead and cover it very well. So, um, yeah, that's that's the problem I'm I'm having with this stuff right now. So, what I'm going to keep doing is keep working. Uh, and today is the seventh. I've got three weeks of videos that you guys are watching before. So what I may do is these things may just sit in me doing nothing with them um, for three weeks uh, because I'm still waiting uh, I'm still waiting for some product uh, and a little bit of help from uh, from a buddy of mine on getting the little bumps uh, the little what do you want to call them the little reliefs for the cowling for where the uh, spark plugs would be coming up through on a uh, there we go uh, because they took the Continental out, as you recall, and put a Lycoming 320 in there. So they needed to put those little things up. I, I can let that go if I want, because as of right now, I have no intention of putting side pipes coming out the side of it. Now, here's something else I came across. And let's see how well this picks it up. Let me turn the light off. And with the hopes that you're going to be able to see it, because I got a little bit of reflection coming from everywhere on this. Let me get in the way of that. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. You can see up there, there's checkerboard on the bottom of that wing of her plane. And that's, and that's her end number on there. So, I saw, I saw an earlier picture where you can see a couple checkerboards coming off with her standing next to the plane. So I was actually able to find, well, let me turn more lights back on again. There we go. So I was actually able to uh, do a little more research having to do with checkerboard pattern under wing. And I found uh, Sarah Cobbies out of uh, Great Britain. And they've got a couple more pictures of her plane that I haven't been able to find anywhere else. So I'm painting checkerboard patterns on the bottom of that wing too. Just so that it's got better differentiation between the... the, the uh, whatever you want to call them, the burst pattern on the top and then on the bottom. So so that'll be fun. Now I've got to try to figure out what paint is going to work good on top of this stuff once it's dry. Um, I do have I do have some older um, let me see if I can find it some older uh, Krylon Color Master Color Master uh, in black and this stuff, I, I'm hoping that it won't attack like that does. And it's going to sit on top, so i got to do some testing. Um, 
because I'd rather use something that is going to be able to go onto that paint once it's ready to go with the risk of, with, without the risk of having it start to, to lift because that's the last thing I want to have to happen. Because as of right now, I should have been done painting the plane. But the problem I'm coming across right now in the waiting time is, uh, you know, had I waited a year, because I got this paint a year ago, had I waited a year, they now, and I think, and I forget what it is, it's called Dual Something. Uh, it's, it's a new product that, that Krylon's released. And it's and I it's dual dual coat or dual core or whatever the heck it is. They actually make that orange and that in that type of paint. I may I may end up getting a can of that and seeing how well it matches. Because if it matches the same orange as this and can go over this orange, I will go ahead and finish the plane in that paint. That's what I got to find out. So, um, just so I can get away from the problem I'm having right here. So, <clears throat> all right, a real quick addendum uh, to the issue with the paint. Um, I did go, uh, I did get back down to uh, the paint store and once again talked to the, after getting shuffled back and forth to different departments, finally got back in touch with the, uh, with the tech that I talked to uh, this morning uh, at Krylon. Um, the little research that I did upstairs, it looked like the product that was the same exact color, and hopefully it's going to be the same color, um, is called uh, Dual Superbond, and it's, it's made by Krylon. And instead of having uh, tooling in it, which was something that was very aggressive, and I think that's what, when it got through and got to the uh, nitrate dope, it, liquid, it liquidized it. Sure, <laughs> it liquidized it. Um, it, that's what allowed it to, to lift um, because right now when I told so, showed you how soft it was I think that's what softened it up and that's kind of what I found through the research had that had some MEK some methyl ethyl ketone in it and That'll do the same thing and I don't know if the, if it was either one of those or both of those uh, but the super uh, the super bond has a has a butyrate in it um, and uh, no uh, tulene no uh, methyl ethyl um, so when I spoke to the, uh, to the tech, uh, over at, uh, Krylon, I was, cause I just wanted to find out if it'll sit on top of it and not attack it. And I was told that it will sit on top. Um, so there should not be an issue. And I was told to just the first coat go easy on it just to make sure that it's not going to lift anything. Just as it's a test. So I, I've got my little test square that, that didn't fail. So what I'll probably do, because I've already got two coats on it, um, and you know it does have considerable amount of drying time. It you know it, it is what it is. Um, it's got just as much drying time as, as the top of the of the fuselage. Um, I'm gonna hit it. I'm gonna hit it with an average coat where it'll where it'll flow, you just flow out. So that way it's gonna be a nice even covering uh, coating on it. And if nothing lifts on it and it looks solid, then I cross my fingers and go in and try to get that taken care of. That way, I should not have an issue with uh, overlapping on the wing, on the on the ailerons, and because it's a different side, it's the top and the bottom. You're not going to notice it. So, um, so I'm hoping that if there is just a slight color difference, you're not going to see it because the only place that uh, you're going to have is they're they're on everything's on a perpendicular corner. You know, the sides are going to be one. That's going to be the the, the super max is the sides and the top and the bottom is going to be the uh, the super the super I keep wanting to say super duty um, the anyway the super bond um, so hopefully hopefully that's going to that's going to be the cure of the problem so right now like I said it's just it's doing this stuff I've got this one covered I've got the iron fired up uh, to shrink it so I'm just going to shrink it down. And just throw coats of dope on it. There's really nothing that I'm going to do until I get that paint in. I'm not even going to put the second coat on anything um, because I, I don't want it to lift. So um, it's my plan and I'm sticking to it. So uh, I will get this stuff taken care of and there's really nothing I can do uh, to the... Uh, 
to the plane to the fuselage with the exception of the doors. I might have a little bit of time on Sunday to get the doors, see if I can get those somewhat mounted um, and get my little latches. If I can get close to having those done, um, it'll be a good day. So anyway, I'll bring you next, I'll bring you back next time I'm actually in the shop doing something new and exciting, hopefully. So uh, that was it. So uh, hopefully, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll learn a lesson and hopefully you guys learn as well. Um, just stay away from that Supermax stuff. I mean, it works good if you can get it done both sides at the same time. But these surfaces are so large, I, I didn't want to take the time to flip it over within two hours because it's not, it's not completely dry after two hours. You know, they say it's safe to handle in 25 minutes. It's not. Um, so, you know, for me, it was, it was safe for me to pick it up and move it in here in two hours, but I don't want to have it down, uh, you know, face down on the, uh, uh, where I'm spraying, on, you know, on top of a drop cloth, because I don't want anything to stick. So, um, so that's what we're doing. We'll wait till we get the other stuff in, and then uh, we'll progress forward from there. So I'll, uh, I'll bring it back in when I got something fun to show you. All right, I just wanted to bring everyone back just for a quick heads up uh, for the end of the video. Uh, today, the, the dual Superbond uh, came in, so they called me up. So I went down and got it. Um, and we're just gonna hope, I, I spray, I test sprayed a piece, uh, my little test board. Uh, I just wanna see how well, once it's dry, what it's gonna look like. Um, so as of right now, I'm not planning on painting anything right this moment it's going to take a couple hours i think for it to to change color to where i'm going to be happy with it um and, and hopefully it's going to dry a little bit lighter than the way it sits right now i know for a fact that the the supermax went on darker and then as it dried it, it it brightened up so anyway um and i hope that happens again uh but what i did was i ended up uh spraying some of that supermax after a couple weeks of the paint being dry um, and and it, it all vented, it gassed off. So when I did the, I'm gonna reach over and get that. When I sprayed the second coat on the wing struts, um, it didn't lift. And the wing struts themselves, the wood was sealed in the same uh, um, the same nitrate dope, even with the uh, the aluminum paste in it, because I wanted everything to have the same base coat underneath it. Um, and that didn't lift. That that actually stayed nicely. So I think the, the, the fuselage itself would have been fine if I, if I waited two weeks, but you don't know. So, and that's where, uh, you know, the first time I did it, it was, it was a little bit, it was a little bit too soon. And then even when I sprayed the bottom and it was 74 hours, or excuse me, 72 hours after the initial spraying, because they said they wanted two days of drying time. So, and even after three days, it still lifted. So, um, so that was the problem I was having with it. Now, with this stuff, I did spray it. I want to show you and see if I can get this nicely aligned so you got a good indication of what we're working with. And then make sure I'm pointing at the right stuff. This over here, as you can see, it's, it's, not, it's, it's a little bit lighter and not as shiny. This has almost two weeks of drying time on it. I sprayed this the same time I sprayed the bottom, so we're looking at more than a week of drying time on this um, now this part right here although you know I can touch it and it feels dry to the touch it, it was only sprayed about 20 minutes ago so it's got a really nice handling time on it um, but it's they say you can they, they call it completely dry in 24 hours so it should be completely dry you know it's it's they say it's good enough for uh, an initial coat within six hours of, of the initial spray or uh, 24 hours after the first spray. So this stuff, just like every other paint, it takes a lot longer to dry than, it, than you really think it does. So you gotta figure after maybe a week, it'll be completely dry. I just wanna see how much, cause I'm not worried about the shine on that. That's not that big of a deal. I'm more worried about the color cause I want it to be as close because what I've gotta go and spray on the tail of the airplane, let me redirect you real quick, is that I've got to do the top, I've got to do the bottom. I'm going to do the vertical stabilizer as well because I had to do a little bit of sanding 
um, back over here on the tail where it really lifted up. So I'm going to have to spray all this and then across the top and the bottom. So the only thing that won't, so as of right now, the only thing that won't be getting sprayed are the sides. And I'm, I'm highly contemplating spraying the sides because I do have a whole case. Um, and because it's just one coat going on, uh, it, it's I, it, all the paint should go a long way. But I've, I'll make that decision after the time come when the time comes. I may um, I may do the wings first, uh, or I may oh jeez, I'm I'll probably start with the bottom first and see how the bottom sprays out, um, and then I may do the wings and the ailerons next, and then save the top for last. Um, just because the way I can do it is if I do decide to paint the sides, once the bottom's painted, I can prop the plane up. I could do the sides and then the top all at once. So, um, so that's when that decision will be made. So, um, yeah, so far so good. I've got the uh, I got my little spray my little spray booth uh, all set up and it's warming up. It's it's probably about 11 o'clock on on Wednesday morning. So. Uh, I got a late start because I had to go down to the, to the paint store and I found out that they have this over at Ace Hardware too so dual so far so good I'll let you know how it goes um, because if it ends up being a very nice paint easy to work with uh, you can get that at your probably your local uh, uh, hardware store so all right I'm gonna bring you in on one spray job and that's it because then I got to get this uh, get this camera out of here Shut it down so hopefully I won't get too much orange. I got orange everywhere. So alright, little quick walk around. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in because on this side I didn't hit the top parts of the aileron uh, aileron mounts. The little mounting brackets. Get a little piece of schmoo over here. So anyway, I didn't get to the top of the, the mounting brackets, the mounting arms. So I'll come in, I'll spray these down first, go around the outside, and then I come across in one basic spray pattern just to get it so that there's something on there. And then I'll come back and do a uh, uh, one or two more passes just to make sure that I've got really good coverage and it's uh, going to be nice and glossy. So. Here we go. That's about not quite halfway down. I'm gonna go the same thing the opposite direction and then when I turn around then I'm gonna come and make sure that I've got good coverage on everything and I need to use the reflection of the uh, the background lighting so if the corner light that you can't see because it's back over this way that's the way that I'll come back so that way I'm getting a good reflection. So just to know that I've got everything covered and there's no dry spots because I want to have this so that this is only Kind of, it's kind of like almost like putting three coats on, but it ends up being two decent coats with one. The second one's kind of almost like a, it's not really a flood coat, but it's pretty close to. I mean, it's a good full coat. And when it's and when it's shrinking down, sorry about that. When it shrinks down, once it dries up, um, it's still showing a little bit of fabric. I may come back um, and put another coat on. I, I'll decide when uh, I get done um, doing the uh, uh, the fuselage because that's gonna, that's gonna let me know how everything is gonna look because it's already got, you know, two, two and a half coats, how I'm doing this one, where it's the first, the little, the little dust coat, then a, a decent coat on top of that one, and then a final. Um, so, I mean, th in theory, that's only one coat. Um, so, uh, that's got two on it. Um, 
so or one no it's actually got one so so we'll see you know I'll, I'll make that decision when the time comes so anyway back to spraying this is what it's looking like so see so it's a good it is a good coat so and hopefully that's going to be the only coat that goes on there so it's looking pretty good there is there are little bits of uh little bits of dust dust and schmutz like right there's one um what will probably end up happening is is it starts to set up where i can touch it need to do a little shot right there and right there where it's uh where i can start to touch it um and it's not sticking to my finger i'll just come across so it'll probably be about an hour i'll run my finger across the top of it and uh let me get this out of the way here run my finger across the top and just go ahead and knock it knock it down knock it off um and then it looks pretty good so anyway that's about it i've uh I'm turning orange again. A R N G E orange. <laughs> so let me uh, let me let's, let me get both of us out of here, or all of us out of here, and uh, come on back downstairs here in about 20, 25 minutes at least. And uh, sorry about that. And and we'll we'll take a look and see how everything is uh, looking. Because as soon as that. As soon as it's all skinned over and I can move it out of here, it goes back upstairs. So, as you can imagine, how how well the the, the house smells upstairs. It's a good thing I'm not married. <laughs>